Hey guys, in this video we are going to be looking at a situation where you're given an equation and a rate equation and from those two bits of information you need to work out the mechanism and the rate determining step. I'm going to walk you through lots of examples and what I'd like by the end of the video is that you're pausing it just after the question and then you're trying to race me through to the answer. So if you can get there quicker than whether you can by I'm just explaining it to you. Don't forget if you want loads more stuff to help you with your chemistry then that is all over on my website for you to download. You might be asked to propose a reaction mechanism for a set of data and the data you'll probably get given is the equation and then the rate equation and the rate equation can either be given to you or you might have to work it out from a set of data that is given to you. I'm going to take you through a set of steps and then work through a load of examples looking at rate mechanisms and rate determining steps. We are going to start by reaction, matching the reactants to either fast or slow, building up the equations, identifying the intermediates, and then at the end, we're going to sort out the overall equation. So in this, we have NO2 and carbon dioxide reacting to make NOCO2, and here is our rate equation. And the first thing we can see is that carbon monoxide is not in the rate equation. That means it must be in the fast step. NO2 is in the rate equation, which means it must be in the slow step. And we can see that the rate equation has two molecules of NO2 in the slow step. So now we're going to try and build up the equations. We know because of the rate equation that our slow step is going to be NO2 plus NO2 and that the carbon monoxide is going to be in our fast step. Now the only thing we can make by adding NO2 and NO2 from our products is um, NO, so we can put that there. And then looking at what we've got left over, adding all together, we've got NO3 left over. Now this is our intermediate. So we can say that CO plus NO3 is the fast equation. From the fast equation, we can deduce that carbon dioxide is a product. And then looking at what we've got left, NO2 is going to be our second product from the FAST equation. We can now add all of the reactants and products together to get our overall. And you'll notice that I'm writing these out separately. Instead of writing 2NO2, it's just going to make it a little bit easier for us to cross things off if everything is written out separately. Now we can look at what things are on both sides. So NO is on both sides, so we can cross that off, and then NO3, and look at what we've got left over at the end. And then hopefully, if you've done this all right, what we've got left over at the end will be the same as our starting equation. Next one now, we start off with 2NO2. But if we look at the rate equation, there is only one NO2 in the rate equation. So this tells us that NO2 is in the fast step and it is in the slow step. So now we can start to build up our equations. We're going to have one NO2 in the slow step and then one in the fast step. Now NO2 being in the slow step and being the only thing in the slow step means that it must be decomposing, it must be broken down. We can see that nitrogen is going to be something that's broken down to, and then oxygen is what it's left over, and that is our intermediates. Putting our intermediate into our fast step, we can see that we get given, or we can work out, that nitrogen and oxygen are going to be the products. Looking at then the overall equation for this, writing everything out separately, and then we can start crossing things off. 
rewriting it, we can check that it matches the equation that we were given so that we can make sure that we've deduced our intermediate equations properly. Another example here, where in the rate equation, we only have one N2O5, whereas in the equation we have two of them, telling us that one must be involved in the fast step and one must be involved in the slow step. And if it's involved in the slow step, then it is slowly going to be decomposing. So we can start to build up our equations, putting a 1 and 2, o, 5 in the fast step and 1 in the slow step, bringing down what we can see in the reactants. We are going to have NO2. And then looking at what we've got left over. And I'm doing it separately down the side here just because there are a lot of N's and a lot of O's. So I'm just doing this as like a little bit of maths. We can see that our other product could be NO3. And that's going to be our intermediate, which we can use in the fast step. So N2O5 plus NO3. Again, a lot of N's and a lot of O's going on here. So I'm just adding them up down the side, just as a pure maths thing to try and sort stuff out. So I can see that I've got three N's and I've got um, eight O's and I'm trying to make NO2. So out of that, I can make three NO2 and I've got O2 left over. So those are going to be our products from our fast reaction. adding everything up all together. And again, writing everything out separately so it's going to make it easier for us to um, knock off things, to knock off intermediates, just so that we can um, make sure we're not missing anything out. And we can see that NO3 is on both sides so we can cross that out. Then we can rewrite the equation as the final overall equation and check that it does match the equation we were given at the beginning. In the rate equation for this example, we have hydrogen and ICL. So we can see that one ICL is in a fast step and one is in the slow step. This makes it nice for us to start building up the equations. So our slow step is going to be HG plus ICL. And our fast step is going to have ICL with an intermediate. Now, if we look at the products of the overall equation, we can see HCL. And we can bring that down to be a product of our slow step. And looking at what we've got left over, HI is our likely intermediate in this circumstance. We can take that intermediate and put it into the fast step. And then look at our products again. We want to end up with two HCl. So there's another HCl here and then I2. Writing out the overall equation, I just want to point out to you the way that I've been really careful writing my I's, my C's and my L's so that it clearly differentiates what an I and a lowercase L is. Um, I know some people that are uppercase I's and the lowercase L's look basically identical, but please for the exam, make them look very different. Now we can start crossing out intermediates and rewriting the equation so we can check that our overall equation that we've deduced from the mechanism and the rate determining step looks the same as the equation we started off with at the beginning. Now this rate equation is slightly different. You'll notice there's something in the rate equation that isn't in the equation. This means it is an intermediate. And then the intermediate plus oxygen must be in the slow step and the NO must be in the fast step. So previously we've had our slow step go being first and then our fast step afterwards. But because we know we have um, an intermediate in our rate equation, the slow step must come after the first step. So we're going to start with our first step being 2NO. 
they can only go together to make N2O2. And then we don't have to work out what our intermediate is because we've been told it up here. We can add those together and then we are going to get 2NO2 at the end. Once you get your head around the fact that you've been given the intermediate, this is actually an easier example than the other ones. Again, writing everything out so we can see what we've got and then crossing off our intermediate. This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.